Miss Aiken, you filed a lawsuit against your mother for paternity fraud. You claim due to her many lies, you uncovered that one man is on your birth certificate, but you grew up calling another man dad. You are confused and say your world has been turned upside down. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Miss Aiken, you say you've committed no crime and believe once the DNA results prove who you claim is your daughter's biological father, you want an apology. Is yes, that correct? Your Honor. All right. Miss Aiken, explain to me how your mother committed fraud. For years, um, my mom had been lying to me back and forth about who is my daddy is. And I'm hurt and I'm tired and I need to know who is my daddy. So you know she's been lying? Yes. How do you know that? Um, a while, a couple years back, Henry Jenkins Jr. told me that my mom told him that I wasn't his daughter, but he was like, whatever Wait a it minute, is, wait a minute. Another in my life told that. So, do you believe Ms. Aiken is Mr. Jenkins' biological child? Yes, yes, Your Honor. That is what you're asserting here in court yes, today. Yes, yes, Your Honor. So, Brittany, I'm going to call you Brittany, if you don't okay. mind, because both of you all are Aiken, so... Yes, ma'am. Um, throughout your childhood, you were told that Mr. Jenkins was your biological father? Yes, Your Honor. Did you have a relationship with him? I had a wonderful relationship with my daddy. I you loved did. him dearly, yes. And so, were you ever presented with any information, indication that someone else could be your biological father? No, Your Honor. So, how did you stumble upon this? I stumbled upon it when I had went to get the birth certificate right here, Your Honor. And it... You have that with you? Yes, Jerome, Your Honor. will you pass me her evidence, please? Why did and you go get a birth certificate? To, um, to get his survivor's check, Your Honor. Okay, so upon Mr. Jenkins' uh, death, you were trying to collect benefits. Yes. And when you got your birth certificate, what did you find? That Thomas Lewis Aiken name was on my birth certificate. Not Mr. Jenkins. When you see the name Thomas Lewis Aiken, what do you do? I'm puzzled because I don't know this man. I You've never, never heard him. of him? I heard of him, but I never seen him as in person. But your last I... name is Aiken? Yeah, that's confusing me too. Why did you think your last name was Aiken and your father's last name was Jenkins? <laughs> Because my mama was married at the time. Oh, so you're saying that th at the time you were conceived, your mother was married to Mr. Aiken? Yes, Your Honor. Me and Mrs. Aiken was not together when I got pregnant with her. Okay, so she got the last name Aiken. But you were not technically together at the time. No, we was not. You were separated. We were separated. And you were having a relationship with... Mr. Jenkins. Yes, yes, ma'am. Were you having a relationship, ma'am, with anyone else? No, ma'am. And so when you discovered you were pregnant, you believed it was Mr. Jenkins' child? Yes, because I know the date I got pregnant. It began the beginning of November. It was the beginning of November? Yes, yes, ma'am. How do you know that was the date? Because uh, when me and him was having sex, Your Honor, I remember the bed broke down. <laughs> and we kept on doing it. You kept on doing that's it? That's right. And that's how I, de that's how I deceived her. That night. That, that night. You, you, that's how you deceived her or conceived her? Conceived her that night. Okay. So you broke the bed. Yeah, we and broke the bed. And y'all kept on now. going. That's right. We kept on going. We didn't stop. So after you saw Mr. Aiken's name on your birth certificate... What do you do, Ms. Aiken? I got in the car and I told my husband, I said, let's go. Let's go to my mom's house. I'm ready to go now. And when I pulls up, I hand her the paper. And she said that this is not right. This is not right. Henry Jenkins is your daddy. And I said, well, do you know where I can find Thomas at? And she said, yes. And we took her down there. I got out the car and went to the house. And then I knocked on the door. Mr. Aiken's sister came to the door and I asked her, has she seen? I went in and I asked her, has she seen Thomas? She said, no. I said, well then, she said, uh, well then mama, Thomas' mother, was coming out the driveway and she said, I gave her my phone number, 
to give to Mr. Akers to call me. When you got there, Brittany, what were you feeling? As his mom was pulling out the driveway, me and my husband looked at her and we was puzzled because I'm a big built woman and his mom is a big built woman. And I'm looking like, oh my God, really? But excuse me, Anna, but and I don't see no uh, future. I don't see no features in her, his mother and Thomas Aikens, uh, period. I see all Mr. Jenkins in her. You see Mr. Jenkins' features. That's right. But you're saying, Miss Aiken, when you pulled up on Mr. Aiken's mother mm -hmm. and she was driving out, you noticed the body structure and you said that felt familiar to you because yeah, it reminded you of yourself. I'm a big woman and she's a big woman. And I'm just looking and I'm looking like... Oh, my gosh. Is, could this be my grandma? If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. So, yes, ma'am. Ms. Aiken, once you saw this person that you potentially thought could be your grandmother, did you ever get a chance to meet Mr. Aiken? No, Your Honor, because he wasn't there yet. After we had went over and left from Thomas' mom's house, she told me and my husband that Thomas Aiken had filled out the birth certificate when she was laying in the bed. She had dozed off and went to sleep. Oh, your mother says that when she was asleep, Mr. Aiken filled out the birth certificate and put his name on it. Yeah. I did not tell her that. No, I did not tell her that, Your Honor. How could she make up a story like this? Well, then she took me the wrong way, but I didn't tell her that. I didn't tell her nothing like that. That's why, Your Honor, I had wanted to go back and talk to Thomas and his mom and his sister by myself, because I knew it was a lie in it. And I can see that that really just upsets you. Yes. 30 years, this is the man I'm thinking who was my daddy. Because if it weren't for him and his mom, I would probably be dead or boarded off somewhere with somebody. I, I don't... My mama had all three of my kids at the time. My grandma, which is her mom, she just gave me to Henry Jenkins and his mom. Did they ever say to you that they had doubt as to whether or not Mr. Jenkins was your biological father? Mr. Jenkins had told me that well, your mom said that you're not my daughter, but... I never told your dad but, that. Never. Where would he come up with that? I don't know what he coming up with. My mama only cared about herself. No, uh-uh. She no. never cared about me my no. whole uh -uh. in 30 years. She was mad because my daddy would not sleep with her. That's why. No, what is you talking my about? My daddy told what me What is that. you talking about? Why would I make up this? Now, I ain't gonna tell me, tell me, me that. I know who I was messing with, who I wasn't messing with. Really? She seems to remain firm that Mr. Jenkins is your biological father. She says she knows. I mean, he's my... He, yeah, he was my daddy because he took care of me. She's saying he's your biological father as well. You just don't believe that. Why would I believe it's something? It's all my, about my this money situation, Your Honor. That's all it's about, the money situation. It's nothing about no money because the simple uh, fact, she never did nothing from me in my whole 30 years. So why, why could it... Why... You only had me a dollar in my whole entire 30 years. I ain't never heard you, I ain't no dollar. You can so, stop that lie. I don't understand why she's telling... She, this the same thing she went and told. That's why I went back and talked to Thomas... What, what did his blood... Thomas' what mama did his come and to? Thomas' sister. That's why I went back and talked to them because I knew she had told them something. She went and told them the reason why I wanted to know who my daddy is for some money. And them people start looking at me like I want money from them. And I told them, I don't want anything from y'all. Well, then, that was it. See, uh, I just want to know who my dad is. All right. Is. Well, and that's what we're trying to help you figure out. And as a part of that, uh, Mr. Aiken is here oh. at court today. Mm hmm And I'd like to hear from him. Jerome, will you please escort Mr. Aiken into the courtroom? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> this lies in the seat. I'm tired. Mr. Aiken, thank you for joining us. You may be seated. 
Mr. Aiken, <clears throat> as you know, we are here discussing um, paternity surrounding Brittany. Yes. She carries your last name. Yes. Uh, do you acknowledge that you have had a relationship with Ms. Bonnie Aiken? Yeah, that's my wife. You are still married yeah, to I'm her. Still married to her. To this been, day. To this day. Mm. See, Your Honor. We still married to this day. And she has a boyfriend. We, Ms. We Aiken, you got up. a husband and a boyfriend? We've been broke up for, for some years, we've been, Yeah, we've been... We, 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 we've been way. split up for some years. Like I told Brittany when I first met her, when I first time I saw her, she was maybe three or four months old. And I didn't see her no more till she was grown like that. That's about, been about a month ago. Really? Uh-huh. You know your name is on her birth certificate, yes, right? Yes, uh-huh. I found that. I didn't find... I didn't know that until he was a, month, your about honor. a month ago. But during the time she was, uh, she got pregnant with her. I was in, I was incarcerated. I had been incarcerated for oh, over incarcerated. almost a year. So, so in your mind, there is no way that you are her biological father. No, ma'am. I can't be. So, Brittany, did you ever hear this? Because you believe he could be your biological father, but he's saying now today there's no way I could be. When... When I met Thomas, I had gave him the birth certificate. Mm -hmm. And he said that I didn't feel that out. It wasn't me. Your mom told me, you're not my child. That's right. Yeah. I so did tell her that. And he said that, well, I'm going to help you get a test done. Didn't hear nothing from him. I had seen him on a Tuesday... And I said, oh, oh. I said, hey, hey. And I was yelling. I don't have no $400 to do no DNA test. That's not what I'm asking you. Hey, how you doing would be nice first. Mm. Not, oh, you don't have no $400. I understand time is hard. But on that, I just want to know who is my daddy. You know, it's, it's hard because when I hear you say 30 years, 30 years, I still don't have any answers. I see that as I listen to the testimony. But I do have those results for you all. And if you're ready, we can get to the truth. Mm -hmm. All right, Jerome. In the case of Aiken versus Aiken, when it comes to 30-year-old Brittany Aiken, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Aiken, you... are not the father. But if she needs some help from me, anything I could do for her, I would do it. Because, you know, I see you. Know. Thank you for saying that. I think it's important, mm -hmm. though, to reiterate that she also wants the truth. Yeah. Am, am mm -hmm. I correct, yes. mistaken? Correct. You want to know the truth. Yes. Correct. And your mother has told you that Mr. Jenkins, it's your biological father, even though you found Mr. Aiken's mm. name on your birth certificate and thought maybe he was your biological father, you're still confused. Mm -hmm. yep. And you want the truth. So I have another result. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. Because the DNA of Mr. Henry Jenkins Jr. was unavailable to test for biological relatedness, an avuncular DNA test with the closest biological relative, his brother, James Jenkins, was performed. With that being said, the results determined if there is a viable relationship between Brittany Aiken and James Jenkins. In the case of Aiken versus Aiken, when it comes to 30-year-old Brittany Aiken, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Jenkins and Ms. Brittany Aiken are not related. I'm sorry, I'm Arnold, so sorry. but I always had thought that was your daddy. But Ms. Aiken, I asked you in this courtroom yeah, today, you were you with me. anyone else? Yeah, you asked me, but it's... Uh, I, I can't think of no one else. <laughs> I had believed that was gonna happen, but I wanted my daddy to be my daddy. So this is this is um, this is difficult. 
because you do still have your mother. She might have just believed Mr. Jenkins was your biological I father. Have I've that. seen that at least a thousand times. <laughs> Whether it was right or wrong, it was real. In her mind. I wish it was. I wish it was. But you know what was real that we can't take away? That he loved you. Yeah. <laughs> and you were his little girl. And his mother took care of you. And despite any doubt, he loved you and accepted you and called you his daughter. And at the end of the day, you were so much more blessed than many. Ms. Mm -hmm. Streeter, you claim that during your relationship with the defendant, he convinced you to get pregnant with his child. But what you didn't know is that he was a married man. Yes, Your Honor. You say Mr. Hartfield is only denying the child in order to save his marriage. Mr. Hartfield, you say you made a mistake by having an affair, but you know you are not the father of Ms. Streeter's child. You claim that Ms. Streeter was openly sleeping with other men besides you. Today's results will determine whether or not you'll be able to save your marriage. Is that correct? That's correct, Yana. So, Ms. Streeter, why are you convinced that Mr. Hartfield is the father of your one-month-old son, Caleb? Mr. Hartfield asked me to have a baby with him. We were dating for um, about eight months, a long time. We were in a relationship, a committed relationship, which is me and him. And throughout the whole relationship, he wanted to have a baby. He said he didn't get to raise any of his. So we went to the hospital and we got the birth control taken out together. We went together. She's telling you guys a bunch of lies. She tell, I mean, a whole lot of lies. That's convincing. I mean, if I didn't know anybody, I'd be convinced. What is true? That's you definitely not the truth. We went in and took a birth control out together. That's definitely we not true. We planned this child, and when we even uh, planned the day, you know, I had an uh, app on my phone that tracked my ovulation, and we knew what we was doing when we was having sex. Yana, please. Before I, Halloween. I just, it's hard for me to see here to tell you. That's a lie. What right. is the truth according to you? The truth is, I, I believe that it's possible that she's thinking about someone else because she and I did meet, that is a fact, and we did talk, and I found her to be very attractive at the time. And I even, you know, did things to convince her that, okay, maybe I will be a guy that she could take a chance with as far as going out on dates. But you were married. Things. And I made sure that she knew that as oh well. Oh, my God. I made that lying. very clear. He's lying. In fact, in fact, Your Honor, if I'm lying, then why, how would she have information to call my wife when I was paying her, simply we... paying her not to tell my wife about the situation? Our first time having sex, we went because down Because I did not pay the rent, a hotel. she called her. He's lying. I, that don't have nothing to do with why I called your wife. At what point did you discover he was married? Let's get to that. He had ended up telling me a relative's name, and I, I had went on Facebook and found the relative, then found Mrs. Hartfield page, then that's when I seen pictures of them. And I didn't even call her right away because he had told me, like, them pictures are old, she's professional, and for her image, she can't, uh, she don't want people to know that we're not together. So I believed him. Matter of fact, I didn't even call her, I text her and let her know, like, your husband's been treating you for eight months and I'm five months pregnant. He's trying to make it seem like we was never in a relationship and I, that this never happened, but he just texted me just recently trying to get back with me, trying to tell me he want to be with me. Oh, my God. So that's is why... Is that true, sir? No, it is not. Have I have a text message to be with right Ms. here. Streeter? He texts me this. I have the proof right here. I'd like to see that. You say not he texts like... you? He texted me earlier this week. This is a text that says, no, and then I'm horny, and then come over. <laughs> oh, my God. And the next line says, I'm serious, I am horny as hell. <laughs> that is true. I did send those messages. Oh, you did? Yes, I but did. But he's a married Hold on, man hold on, hold on, hold on. Wife. Let me explain to you why. Because of this game that she and I like to play, that she likes to play. If I don't do that, Dominique goes ballistic. And no. we've been playing this game, but now that we're in court, it seemed like some, that some old man has been trying to hit on a young lady. But I'm telling you, that is not true. You 46-year-old married man, Mr. Hartfield, what game are you playing with a 22-year-old okay. okay. girl? Okay, okay, and okay, okay, I tell you what. No, I tell you what. no, 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 no. Okay. I want to understand, okay. what game is this you feel like you need to play with a 22-year-old girl, girl where your line is, I'm horny? Your Honor, I am dealing with a 22-year-old, okay? It's because I didn't do things for her from the extortion that she's been doing to me that she's going to call my wife. OK? That time, she did. OK? Next time, she said she's going to report that I stole her car. So I'm in a situation where I either get locked up or lose my wife, but definite, if I don't play her little childish game. 
I'm so what you you're right saying now. is you entertain her, you pacify her yes. with flirtation. Yes. Yes. Because that keeps her calm. I have to. To where she doesn't do destructive things like call your wife. You call it's wife. What was his reaction when you told him you were pregnant, Miss Streeter? Well, it was planned. He, it was expected. He was excited. Nah, he wanted a baby. Please. That was the whole point. Uh, the deal, this is the situation. Dominique deal with so many guys, okay? She found one that was an older guy, and she thought that I would be a can a cake daddy, or however you want to call it. The thing is, is that she found out, hey, you're dealing with a guy that ain't got no money, so now you waste your time. Now That's not true. That's not true. But because, because you done wasted so much time telling people that he he's was... your baby father, that now you got to play the role. And so that's exactly what she's been doing. Nobody don't care about money because I, oh. I, I I've been I was uh, here because I love him. Daddy hangs Genuinely, up on you I was you supposed to be for money. He kept asking me about marriage. He, he made me realize stuff that I never even knew I thought about, like the future and being with him. He he Man, all the time really talking he wants to marry me. This, this he, call for now this now he's trying to stop. I'm just being honest. Now he's standing right here as if it was about money. No, you playing games. You the one with a wife. Your wife does not look happy. Your, Honor, me, Your wife is sitting there having to listen okay. to testimony okay. a, about you okay. sending text messages right. to a 22 year old girl talking about you horny. I want to hear from your wife. I know she wants some results too. So, Miss Hartfield, I can see when you were sitting there, this was very painful for you to hear. This is ridiculous. Did he fill you in on all of these details and the fact he's still texting this 22-year-old young woman? No, he did not. How did you even find out about this entire affair? The text message that I received from her. You get a text message. A random text message that says, I'm in a relationship with your husband, have been for eight months, and I'm pregnant. Mm. And that's it. What do you do from there? What the bleepity bleep? <laughs> is going on here. And I asked him about it, and he said, oh, she's just some little girl. She ain't nobody. I didn't like texting, so I called her. And I'm like, mm -hmm. we had a conversation. It was a decent conversation, mm -hmm. to which I told her, best of luck. He's not gonna take care of your child because he didn't take care of ours. Mm. True. Yeah. I don't have time for children. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not dealing with this. I don't want any part of this. And that was where I left it, and I haven't spoken to her since. And so, Ms. Streeter, who was with you at the birth? He was there when the baby was born. He was exi excited, like, you know, that's my baby, that's my boy. I never got to see none of my kids born. I want to be with you. Let's make this work. We got a child. He needs to be in the house with both parents. Were you telling her these things, Mr. Hartfield? No. I tried to get him to sign the birth certificate. The reason why, he signed it at first, but it was time for the witness to see us. And he like, you too anxious about me signing this birth certificate. You know what, miss? Take my name off talking to the, the witness. Like, I don't want to be on the birth certificate. So first he signed the birth certificate. Uh -huh. Do you have any proof of that? Yes, I do. I have the original one when he first signed the birth certificate. So his name is placed on the certificate of birth. So Mr. Hartfield, you're a married man. Yes. But you're Correct. on this child's original birth certificate. No, no. Well, the name is printed. I, it's no signature of mine. So, at first, you allowed your name to be printed? They did that while I wasn't there, Yana. This is the first copy before he took off the name. Mr. Hartfield, you're saying it didn't go like this. It didn't. How did it go? She kept pressing me about, please sign it. You got to sign it right now. It's got to be done. First of all, it's embarrassing That's to why have she threw to stand up there and he want to go back and forth with me on whether or not, uh, why am I pressuring him to sign the birth certificate? So, it was not just that I got so mad about DNA tests. I'm not the only man she said was the daddy. He's... He's lying. Really? I'm not the only He's man. A liar. Mr. Hartfield, what do you mean? You say you're not well, the only there's man? There's a guy in our local town that she's also told him. He's lying. That he was the father, and she promised to give him some more loving once she had the child. I, I'm not, I don't sleep around. Like, I just don't understand what he coming up with these lies. For me, I feel like it's an iffy thing with him. If I don't want to be with him, he don't want to be with the baby. But it's times when I have to come over and he has to kiss the that baby. that is absolutely crazy. Nuts what she's saying. What is If I don't want to be with her... Will you look at this queen right here? If I, if I, you look, wouldn't hold on, hold on, no, 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 you said because I don't want to be with you. I have a picture I mean, I'm just where saying, Your Honor, with I do baby. have options. Even my wife, I love her. God knows I do. During the time that Dominique and I met, I had my own place. He Dominique was still had living with place. me. I didn't know he had his own place. Wait a minute, I don't need her support. I don't need your support. No. I, I don't need her support. Please sit her down. Please sit her down. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, Mr. Hold 
Come on, Mr. Hartfield. Just a minute ago, that's your her. wife that's was a support. queen. And yes, but she gonna speak like that and she's not supporting me. She's supporting I have somebody proof else. On oh, well, 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 wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Your Honor, only by your wish that you she's You seem like you're here. getting flustered. I don't like it. That's why I, I stepped out and had intercourse. Oh, now it's her and fault. Because I never got her support or anything. Not only that... That's a fact. He had more girlfriends than he was that. talking to me. When I first met him, he had a lot of women he talked to. Of course. A lot. Of course. It was a... Of course. So not it's only was it me, it was out. other people. Let the talking? truth come yeah. out. That's yeah. exactly what I said. So, so she's not my only choice. That's my point. I don't need her. I have my own place. I'm a man. I'm standing on my own two feet. And both of them want to go separate ways. That's fine with me. I so never Ms. had a relationship Hartfield, with her. So, Hartfield, you felt like he was living with you when he was sleeping with her. Yes. And Definitely. you didn't know about this other place. I did not know about the other place. Oh, wow. How did you find out that there was another place? When she told me. I have pictures of he, him and he my took son pictures. spending yes. time together. Let me see these pictures. I came for two these hours. These are when pictures you of around what? with another man last week. Spent times with my son when he claimed. Is this at the other place? Yeah. And this is that's baby me. Caleb that's right. together. I did that last week, actually. Also, something else. baby, sit down, please. You ain't got nothing to do with this. I sure Where don't have y'all? anything to do with it. I wish Pick you your lie. Why are you here? Because you asked me to be here. Yeah, Mr. Sorry. Hartfield, yeah. I'm going to let you pipe down just a little okay. bit because okay. your tone. Yes, ma'am. While you're talking to your wife... Yes, ma'am. ...is making me edgy. I understand. I understand. It's making me edgy, too. Please sit down. I called her up to testify... I understand. ...so she'll be standing until I ask her to be seated. I don't know what part of this you think you running. <laughs> Stop that nonsense clapping. You don't run me. And you don't run this court. Now, ma'am, Ms. Hartfield, you're saying that this was not the story that you were told. No. What was your understanding? I knew they had a relationship... And it was, I don't want to be with her. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. I want to be with you. Yada, yada, yada. Can we, can we work it out? And I can see this really upsets you. It's foolishness. And I didn't need it and I didn't ask for it. I want a divorce if I can get one. We good. I'm good with that. Not a problem. You're classic. Thank you. You're classic. You really are. Thank you, y'all. I mean, it's just, if I pulled up the profile of cheater, con man, Lying. clown, and coward. Results. Your face would be next to it. <laughs> now, you sitting up here with your wife standing next yes. to you. That's your wife. She's my seventh wife, Your Honor. <laughs> things that have been said in here, all of it is not true. No, the things that have been said in here, you validated. This is the part that I don't think you see. I mean, it, you're, you're compulsive yes. with it. Because yes. you will validate what they both say and then in the next breath say they're lying. Well, hey, okay. And honestly, Mr. Hartfield, I'm really letting you go on because I haven't figured out yet what your end game is. Right. He doesn't have one. Th that's exactly what I'm... Uh, yeah, that is exactly what my conclusion is yeah. becoming, Mr. Hartfield. Okay, so, so, so I just want to make... Now, let's take a pause for the cause. Yes. Women... Did you hear his testimony? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure. Mr. Hartfield, you may be one of the most disappointing men I've ever seen in Thank this you. courtroom. Thank you. You are really... <laughs> no, the clapping, I mean... What a disgrace. Thank you. Thank you, y'all. I mean, you really should be yeah. so ashamed. It doesn't bother me, though. I know, I, mean, I can really tell. Does. Yeah. I have given you every opportunity to tell your story and also acknowledge the fact that you have led this young girl down a road to nowhere. Okay. Now she may have a child by you, but I, I think I'm really just talking long enough because I want to give the women an opportunity to understand so they can run while they can. <laughs> <laughs> You're clapping for your own idiocy. <laughs> I mean, you know... And I love that. Thank you. I'm always hopeful for mm -hmm. the spirit of an individual, and I try to see the good in everyone. Right. I don't think I've ever said this in this courtroom before, Jerome, but I pray he's not this child's father. Mm -hmm. I hope not. Jerome, I'm ready for the results. Lord, help us. All right, you can just help me. I'll be cool with that. Quiet! Yes, ma'am. I'm so sick of your little nonsense mouth running. Yes, Your Honor. You a tall glass of nothing. <laughs> Sitting up here clowning in this courtroom today, clapping and smiling. Thank you, thank you. Acting like a buffoon. Oh,
These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Streeter versus Hartfield, when it comes to one month old Caleb Streeter, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Hartfield, you are the father. Okay, that's cool. That's okay. Do you understand now what you just made a child with? Right, right. No, do you, no, no, look at me. Mm -hmm. I don't know what he told you up until this point. I will say that con men like him, they can be very charismatic. You two are both very beautiful young women. You don't have to deal with this. But I want you to see clearly in this courtroom today how he has acted. This is your child's father. Now, his wife has already told you he didn't take care of the one they have together. And quite frankly, I'm nervous for Caleb because I don't want him to be his example. <laughs> Ms. Hartfield, I know this was probably all very difficult for you to hear, and yet I really do feel this, this all needed to play out. Oh, absolutely. I wanted to hear it firsthand because I couldn't t trust him to tell me the truth. This is a rough day for me. Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I really. I, listen, listen, Mr. Hartfield, just yes, stop talking. <laughs> just stop talking. It, it doesn't, over. it doesn't, you don't ever say anything of value. So yes. just stop talking. Okay. Mrs. McClung, you are here to prove to your now husband that he is the biological father of your four-year-old daughter, Desiah. You claim this paternity issue has fractured your marriage and you need today's results to repair the break in your family. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. McClung, you say you had no knowledge of Desire for the first two years of her life, and now that you are married, Mrs. McClung is desperate to prove you are the father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so Mrs. McClung, you say your family is fractured. Yes, Your Honor. Explain. Um, the first, the year we've been married, we've had our ups and downs in the beginning. Um, we got over that. Now the paternity is a continued issue. It's brought up often. It's, is she mine? Is she not mine? It's, um, I, I admit, I did tell him at first she wasn't his. Oh, so that part? Yes. <laughs> I, I that mean, never goes over well. Right, but in the beginning, we were just friends with benefits around the time of conception. We weren't serious. It was an on and off thing between me and Chris. So no commitment. So do you remember it that way, Mr. McClung? Yes, Your Honor. I would like to start off by saying I love my family. I really do. But oh. I cannot keep living without knowing if she's mine or not. So... Yeah, we was messing around when we first started seeing each other. We was just like friends with benefits. We weren't in a serious relationship. We weren't really together. It was actually the night of her birthday. <laughs> While she talking, I just slid over next to her, and one thing led to another. So the conversation stopped after that. <laughs> and it was action. There was a break in between that. Me and Chris started messing around again a few months later. And that's around the time I got pregnant was uh, when we started messing around again. Then what happens? Um, Chris left and went to go do whatever it is he do. And I, um... What do you do? <laughs> well, Your Honor, like I said, we went together. So, um, for them two weeks, we was, like, just sleeping with each other. Mm hmm And I left to try to get a better opportunity from St. Louis. How long were you gone? I was gone for about two years. Two years? Yes. So hold on, I just have to ask a question that's going through my mind. You all get together and have sex nonstop for two weeks. Yes. Then you say, I'm gonna take a job out of town. Yes. Then you don't even hear from one another? No. You don't know anything about this baby? And I, I feel like this. She probably was thinking that I wasn't ready to settle down and she didn't probably didn't want to let me know about the baby. I didn't have time for the back and forth between me and Chris, to be honest. He blocked me on Facebook and everything. Oh! Oh, so now we're getting a real story. <laughs> so you have sex for two weeks. Yes. And then all of a sudden, he disappears. Right. And you get blocked on Facebook. Right. Oh, so you think he ghosted you. Right, basically. So oh! After I, so after I got blocked and we hadn't talked, I'm not gonna lie, like, I, I had sex with someone else one time. And um, I went to go get on birth control. 
And that's when I found out that I was pregnant. So, you submitted a calendar to the court... Yes, Your Honor. ...that outlines the sexual activity during the window of conception. Yes, Your Honor. Please step up to the monitor and please tell the court <laughs> what was going on at that time. <laughs> this is the two weeks me and Chris was together. Like, strong every night. Like, so for two weeks. So, the green is the sex fest... Right. <laughs> ...with Chris. Right. And then... Okay. September... So uh -oh. That's in August. Right. This is August. This is me and Chris. September 5th, I had sex with someone else one time. You did? Yes, ma'am. And you had sex with that other person with no protection? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, that's why we're here. Right. All right. And then you go to the doctor when? I went to the doctor around the 20th of September. Um, they did an ultrasound. When they did my ultrasound, they, uh, said that I was about six weeks pregnant. So, once you realized you were six weeks pregnant, which is on the 20th of September, you then counted back one, two, three, three four, four, five, five six. six. Right. And that's the window of conception, which would have been one of the weeks you that had me and the Chris sex was together. Fest yes, ma'am. With Mr. <laughs> McClung. Yes, ma'am. And the only other person you had sex with was on the 5th. Was on the 5th of September. Yes. Which was really just two weeks before you went to the doctor. Right. Understood. You may step back to the podium. And so, once you determine that Mr. McClung is the biological father in your mind, did you reach out to him? No. I mean, I mean, it's one thing to be blocked on Facebook, but you had his phone number, too, didn't you? No. I had no way to get in contact with Chris. Once... Once Chris left at the end of August, and he cut off contact with me. I just went ahead and let it be what it was, and I just went with the fact that I said that the guy on the 5th was the baby. That. So, when Chris asked me, once he finally showed up two years later, if she was his, I told him no. When I got back in town, um, my cousin invited me over, and she say, oh, Tori's and the baby outside. By this time, I want to know if she's mine so I could be in her life. So, I'll, I go to the car. I say, can I see the baby? She say, yeah. I pick the baby up. I asked her. I say, be honest with me. This my baby? She said no. So, I got to... I'm like, well, can I walk around the neighborhood and, and ask? Actually, he didn't ask. He, he Hold actually, on, wait, what? He actually didn't ask. He just walked off with her. He just walked off with her. Now, Jerome, I ain't never heard of such. Somebody <laughs> says, this my baby. They said, no. Well, hold on. Can I walk around the neighborhood and ask? <laughs> he, he didn't even ask It's not he funny, but it is absolutely her. ridiculous. <laughs> but the truth is, it's probably how desperate you feel when there's a question of paternity. Yes. So, why, Miss McClung, why in the world, when you have the opportunity to let him know so that he can be a part of her life, do you decide to say she's not? And listen, I'm only asking because I want to understand. I don't want her to have to go through the, oh, he's here today, he's gone tomorrow. Like, that's the last thing I want. I don't want to have to be the one to wipe her face because somebody's here one minute and not there the next. So, the truth is, it was a defense mechanism. Yes. And you just said, you know what? No, she's not yours. Because what you were really afraid of is that he would do to your daughter what he did to you. Right. Right? Right. Which means he was all in... And then he was all block, out. ...and then all out. All right. So, eventually, somehow it all came together because you all are married. Yes. What happened? Yes. <laughs> he unblocked me on Facebook <laughs> and started inboxing me, asking Now, questions. you shouldn't have to have no baby to get unblocked. <laughs> that <laughs> is ridiculous. But, okay. So, we so you, uh, you get unblocked, and then what happened? We were talking. He, uh, basically, he was like... You know, he wants to know for sure that that's his daughter. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I can understand that with everything that's done happened. I told him then, Chris, if you're that serious about it, get a DNA test. Ah. So, now, in that moment, what happens, Mr. McClung? Do you immediately try to find a way to get a DNA test? Um, yes, Your Honor. I got to, um... Me and my cousin got to talking. We got to calling places until she let me know a little information that she, uh... Miss Torres told her. 
when I went around. And uh, this is your cousin? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I'd like to hear from you. Please stand. State your name for the record. Antonia Gandhi. So, Mr. McClung just testified that after he thought Desire was his, you then had some information for him. Yeah. Can you share that information with the court? So, he was out of town, and I ended up going to the apartments that she stayed in because my friend stayed over there. And I ended up seeing the baby and her and another dude outside. And they was hugged up and kissing, and Desire was calling him daddy. I mean, the thing about it is, is at the end of the day, if Chris cared that much, he wouldn't have just left and just not even had a piece of contact information for him. You know what I'm saying? So, therefore, what I was doing, the person that I was talking to at that time, that was all Desire knew. So, that's who was there. Well, at the end of the day, this is a recipe for a paternity question. Right. This is why we do this. I can understand that. No, what that. my point is, is that what you have to understand, that all of this set in motion leads to him having doubt. Right. And why this situation persisted longer than it had to. Right. I started paying attention to, like, how Desire... That hairline Chris got, Zaya has that hairline. Chris okay. also has that overbite. Desire has an overbite. Like, I did my research on that, and that's genetic. This court wanted to get a greater understanding, and we've asked one of the most premier dentists in the nation and star of Married to Medicine, Dr. Heavenly, to give us more insight on this issue of overbites. Jerome, will you please escort Dr. Heavenly yes, into the courtroom? <clears throat> I'll put you right at the podium next to the... Hi, Dr. Heavenly. Hello, how are you? I am wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today. No problem. Uh, Ms. McClung has presented evidence that she read that overbites were a genetic trait. Is that hereditary? It can be. Yes, it can be. It's a recessive trait, just like hair or nails or anything. An overbite can be a genetic trait, yes. It can be. Yes. All right. So, can they be attributed to any other factor as well? Absolutely. It could be tongue thrusting, sucking your thumb, or um, just sucking on a bottle too long would cause an overbite. So, after hearing Dr. Heavenly's testimony, does that make you even more nervous no. about the paternity? No. It doesn't? No. Honestly. So... You know, I already knew from your earlier testimony that when you get in a certain position, you put that wall up, right? It's easier. I understand. It's okay to say, this is scary for me. I didn't want to be in this position. Do you understand? Yes. So there is a lot at stake, and it's all right to honor that. Mr. McClung? Yes. You've yes, developed a relationship with Desire. You are her daddy. Yes, Your Honor. So the stakes are very high for you as well. What does it feel like in this moment? Truthfully, Your Honor, the bond that we got, I love it. You know, that's my... That's... Like, doubt... I'm in doubt, yeah, I am. But at the end of the day, that's my baby. It matters to you, right? Yes, ma'am. okay to honor what you really feel. And I think too often we've become a culture where we just want to say what's politically correct, right? And sometimes it's the most beautiful statement we can make. Like, no matter what happens, she's gonna be mine. I believe you. But what I also believe is this is hurting you. And that's okay to say. Because that's how we get to the healing, is to acknowledge the hurt first. Right. And the reason why this court exists is so that people and families that are in your position can get the truth. Jerome, I'll take the envelope, please. <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics 
and they read as follows. In the case of McClung versus McClung, when it comes to four-year-old desire, it has been determined by this court. Mr. McClung, you are not the father. I'm very sorry. It's cool, because no matter what, she got me. They all got me, regardless. Thank you for that, Mr. McClung. Can I go see my baby? Oh, honey. <laughs> we want to give him a minute. Ms. McClung, I'm sorry. Honey, I know that was not the result you wanted. Can you tell the court what you're feeling in this moment? What are you thinking? I'm just hurt, honestly. Do you know definitively who her biological father yes. is? Is it the guy from the fifth? Yes. And do you know where he is? Yes. We got this. We got this. Mr. McClung, thank you for coming back into the courtroom. I know it's difficult. And I know you needed a moment. But your wife needs you too. This is not easy. But it's the truth we needed to be able to move forward. And I hope if one thing came out of this, it's the fact that you have to honor your real feelings. You can't put a wall up and put a wall up. That's why you all weren't connecting, because you weren't being honest about what you really feel, okay? Yes, Your Honor. So please talk to Dr. Jeff and be honest about what you really feel.